Good morning guys, we are currently in the middle of nowhere. Well, to be precise, we're at Mount Victoria in the Blue Mountains. Uh, so today we have something very important going on. We're doing a comparison and I thought I'd uh, walk you through what we do in a comparison and, and how it all comes about. Uh, we've also got radio tonight, so I will take you behind the scenes there as well. But let's kick things off with a quick chat uh, with my colleague Matt Campbell about what we do in a comparison and how it all works. See if I can find him. I think he's here modelling somewhere. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you? Say hello to everyone. Hi. Howdy. So, today we're doing a comparison uh, yep. with two very special cars. We have the, uh, and I'll just quickly give people a look at this, we have the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport and we have the new Holden Trailblazer. Well, it looks different from uh, the front. The rear is the exact same. And then we've got our Car Advice Triton over there. So Matt, how do we do this? How do we compare cars so that uh, everyone knows which cars to buy? Oh, that's a good question. Well, we've tried to line things up on price because price is where people, you know, probably focus the most of their attention. But also these two vehicles in particular are both of the same ilk, you know, they're both seven seaters, they're both four wheel drive, they've both got diesel engines, and they're both, yeah, around the same price point with similar levels of equipment. So our aim is to try and explain what the differences are and what that means for the consumer. So as we've found on this test already, there are some pretty marked differences in the way they drive. Um, the Pajero Sport is sort of, it's great in some ways, it's got really good comfortable seats but it does have a bit of steering rack rattle and, and can be a little bit sharp over bumps where the Trailblazer has slightly better steering, uh, not, not as much rack rattle and it's maybe a little bit more composed over bumps but you know you've got to weigh up what people might want, what people care about, you know that's got a much better engine um, in terms of torque. Uh, and, and the gearbox is probably a little bit better as well because it's not, you're not sort of constantly hunting for a gear where in this it's got a lower torque output and the gears there's more gears to play with and it is more refined and quiet but you know it doesn't have the same amount of grunt so these are the questions we've got to sort of weigh up and figure out yes you know what's more important to people. and and that's the thing we're we're here to make sure that when you spend your fifty two thousand uh, dollars you're going to get the best car and one thing that we've already discovered if you come around to the back of the Pajero Sport uh, aside from it being um, <laughs> quite ugly uh, so this is the front of the uh, the Trailblazer um, we have found that there's issues with dust sealing so if you have a look in here you've got dust encroaching on the cabin and also up on the uh, the door lid there. So it shows you that um, that these things you may not see during your normal test drive, which is why it's important for us to put them through their paces. And that's what we'll be doing today. We're going off-road, uh, we're shooting some video, and along the way I'll intro you guys to Glenn, our videographer, and Zoe, who's disappeared. Sorry. Too shy. Um, who's helping us coordinate everything as well. So uh, stay where you are and uh, we'll guide you through the process of how we find out which one of these two is the winner. See you then. <laughs> Righto guys, so we are in the bush, the weather has turned fairly nasty and it's now time for us to get some dynamic shots of these cars. Now while on a video it all looks like it all happens at the same time, uh, we actually have to stop and get everything set up and, and make it all look as sharp as we can. So that puddle over there uh, is what we're going to be driving through to get some of our dynamic shots. You can see it is nice and deep. Uh, we checked the depth just before with a massive stick and in turn I've become uh, extremely dirty. Uh, but I thought we'd have a quick chat to Glenn, our star, star videographer. Glenn, we're shooting this now. Um, when we do it, what's involved? Do you just hit record or are you sort of looking to get the light right and, and to make sure that this car looks good on camera? Uh, we're always looking for the good light, obviously. Um, but right now, we're, because there's gonna be uh, mud and water kind of flinging everywhere, we're set up to shoot some slow-mo shots. So, okay, um, 
And with the slow-mo, how does that work? Is it basically just taking more frames on yeah, the video? So basically, on this, on this camera, we're shooting at 200 frames per second. Yep. As opposed to your normal sort of 25 frames yep. per second. Just puts more, more still images into the video frame at that second. Fantastic. All right, well, I think it's time for us to send Matt through. Uh, I did a trial run just before in the Pajero, and uh, it did a good job. Let's see what happens now when Matt comes through in the Trailblazer. Here we go. <laughs> that is some um, very impressive stuff. Um, so when we're doing this sort of stuff, we'll generally um, obviously check the depth first, uh, but then generally attack it in low range. And the reason for that is you want to get uh, get the momentum up, but it also gives you a, an aid if you do get stuck, because what happens is uh, when you are stuck, you've got a recovery strap, and if you're not in the correct four-wheel drive settings before you go in, it can be hard to engage them when you're stuck in the water. Uh, because the car has to be able to move to, to get into a low range or to lock a differential. So um, that is some exciting stuff and uh, we'll move on to our next challenge and keep you posted. Okay, so this right here is another important part of our testing and the reason is we want to see what the approach angle is like. So that is pretty much a vertical uh, incline there. Got Maddie there in the uh, Pajero Sport. Let's see it in action here. Look at that, walk in the park. So basically different four wheel drives vary here in the way that they can approach that face. Um, the Trailblazer has a 28 degree approach angle so it means that it actually touches when it hits the wall. The Pajero Sports is better so it just basically walks up. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of exactly how we put those claims to test. Right, we are done and dusted over here. Uh, we're setting up now for our outro shot. Uh, you can see that all taking place there. Glenn will get the camera set up, we'll get a few photos and uh, have this thing ready to publish. So you'll be able to read it at caradvice.com, best motoring website on the internet. And you can see what our conclusion is and which of these two family SUVs is the best. Uh, so I'm about to duck off now uh, to the city. We've got a radio show tonight, so stay exactly where you are and we'll go behind the scenes on that one. So every Monday night we do uh, our motoring program with Steve Price. Steve is away and we've come up to Sydney uh, to show you what the studio looks like up here. And we have a very special guest here. <laughs> Hi. Can you tell us, Jeanette, how does it work when someone calls up? Um, what do you guys do here? How do you screen them? How do we know in the studio what they're talking about? Right, so number one, it's very busy, especially yes. car advice. The phones just light up and that's no exaggeration. <laughs> and as one call drops out, and like, as they take one call, yep. another one comes on. So, And we don't have a pre-selection process, so it's just luck of the draw as to which call goes next. Yep. Um, and it's extremely busy and we try to be as polite as possible always that is our motto good well i always hear um when when the ladies here are talking to people it is it is always with the utmost politeness what happens when you do get a caller that's perhaps um tipsy or accidentally called um... okay so look it does happen occasionally it's very rare i would say the majority of our calls are very yep. um, good legitimate quality calls um we do occasionally get people who number one might ring a wrong number or number two might be on the not so friendly side um we always remain as polite and yes. courteous as possible um if it's someone who you know sometimes you have to be a bit careful because you might have someone that's a bit heated for the wrong reason yeah sure so we just politely will you know maybe say to them that we'll take your name or number down yeah the phones are full which are, which we're telling them the truth yeah and if we can fit them on we'll call them back yeah or in some cases we just know for a fact we just let them have their say to us yep. and then you know let it go at that because there are there is just a small percentage yep. that we do and that is we have to be assertive on yep. that because you want quality radio yep. the quality of yeah listener. absolutely so, yeah. so if you ever want to call us up on a monday night uh, firstly you can tune in by uh, either 3aw 2gb 4bc there's a whole bunch of regional stations as well uh, you can listen live online what's the number that everyone needs to call it's 131873. Look at that. Spoken like a true professional. Uh, Tally, Tally will tell you the same thing. 131873. <laughs> Always. So Tally, what are you doing over here? So I'm getting all the calls when they come in. 
Um, I'm reading Daily Mail. Yes. And I'm also I'm monitoring Twitter to see if there's any breaking news during the show that ah, we need to report on. So basically, as anything comes through, you'll pass it over straight to the presenter, and they'll they'll have the the cutting edge of uh, news information at their fingertips. Yeah, pretty much. We can email them a tweet or print it out, and they can. But the best thing about radio is how live. Yes. It is. So if something happens straight away, yep, bang, it everyone knows about it. Beautiful. Well, we're going to go in and have a chat to Michael McLaren, who's filling in for Steve Price, and we'll have a look at how everything works on that side of the glass. Right, so we're in the studio here. Uh, we've got Michael McLaren. How are you? Very well. Thank now, you. You, you're better known to people as the man that does the graveyard shift. I am. Is it hard to get callers at that hour? No. It's okay. not that's right. We go to Brisbane, we go to Sydney, Canberra, regional stations. Are they normal people? people? Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, we're very fortunate. We get really good quality callers, good calibre of call and lots of them. So Excellent. It makes the five and a half hours go more quickly than otherwise it would have. Good. And what car do you drive? That's I drive a right. Mazda. Uh, one of the old SLKs, but at 20 years she decided she'd had enough. <laughs> <laughs> so she went off to the Nackery Yard and... <laughs> Very happy with the master. <laughs> Sensational. There you go. Normal people, a car people as well. And uh, one final thing we'll have a look at is down here at the desk. Have a look at this. That is all happening there. We like to think of it as mission control. Can you run us through what all this stuff is? Oh, well, look, it's all pretty straightforward once you get used to it. This is what all the calls come in on. We call it yes. phone box. Uh, this is where the magic happens. This is where all the ads come from out of this one. This is where we make you sound as amazing as possible. This is the uh, car advice with Paul Merrick. Oh, it's you. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, look, my job is to make you sound good, but no. that comes naturally. Yeah, no, no, I, I promise you it doesn't. That, that is quite hard work. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the studio at uh, 2GB in Sydney. Anyway, time to sign out and head off. Uh, if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Uh, you can also catch me on social media. Make sure you subscribe. So you hit that subscribe button and you'll get a, uh, a note every time there is a new video on here. Till next time, take it easy.